What do we got here? So it's been a minute since we heard anything about this desktop filament recycler. Since you guys have been asking, here's the full story as well as why there haven't really been any updates. So a while back I saw this ad for a desktop filament recycler. You've probably seen the ad too, they seem to spend a lot of money on advertising space. It promises a super user-friendly way to recycle things like support material, failed prints, anything like that, into new usable filament. So I looked into it no more and committed $100 to reserve my spot to buy one of these. That's reserving a spot to purchase one at early bird pricing. That means I'll buy mine for $1,500 instead of $2,500. So I was stoked. I'm stoked. I immediately texted Paul about it, and he told me about a video that Uncle Jesse did addressing the filament recycler. Uncle Jesse brought up some legitimate concerns with the alleged company and product. He pointed out some suspicious things like the fact that they weren't doing a traditional Kickstarter, they were just crowdfunding it kind of through their own site, sort of. But the campaign collecting the money was not happening through any traditional mean or well-known platform. That's just one of several things that he brought up that seem a little bit fishy when we're looking at the loop filament recycler. I'll link his video below. Now since I had committed a hundred of my finest dollars to this perfectly legitimate product, my next move was to reach out to the company directly. I'm such a massive influencer with so much pull in the industry, surely they would respond to me. I mean, who doesn't have time to stop everything that they're doing to email a YouTuber? Now before I string you along for any more of this video or waste any more of your time, I want to be very transparent about a few things. First of all, this is not going to be some juicy story where I break all the hottest news about the loop filament recycler. This isn't going to be some inside look at the machine that nobody's ever seen or something like that. And honestly, I'm not going to be able to tell you anything that isn't already publicly available. This video is going to be a recap of what we know, followed by some context around the reasons why we haven't had any updates in the past year or so. So keep that in mind if you do decide to join me for the rest of the video. And while we're at it, I'm just going to peel back the YouTube curtain a little bit for you. These kinds of videos are a little bit out of the norm from what we normally put up on the channel. And so what that means is we don't really know how well they're going to perform and they're kind of risky to spend our time on. With such a busy content schedule and a lot of projects that need my attention, it is difficult to decide to stop those things and make this video. So before I continue with the updates and the recap, I have two requests. First of all, have a look at keoprints.com and check out the shirts, hats, and hoodies that we have for sale there if you'd like to support the channel and continue supporting what we do here. That's an excellent way to do that. Now number two, there's going to be a PCBWay ad later in the video. Companies like PCBWay supporting us and sponsoring these videos means we can get away with putting off those projects and devote some time on the things that you guys are asking for. So consider using their services and check the link in the description if you want more information, but we'll touch on them in a second. That's all the disclaimers, let's talk about the filament recycler now. Back to the recap, I reached out to the Loop team to see if they had any press units or anything they could send out beforehand because I was eager to get my hands on this sucker. You know what, to my surprise they responded inside of a week. They respectfully offered to hop onto a video call because they didn't have any press units. In fact, they only had the one working prototype at that time. Being early in the prototyping stage, that makes enough sense. But, by all accounts, this seemed legit to me. This wasn't some poorly automated message asking for my social security number. I didn't have to tell them my mother's maiden name or the street that I grew up on. There weren't any sketchy links asking me for more money. And they even offered something in place of what I requested. So I was impressed. Impressive. I was reaffirmed to feel good about the commitment I made to this product. I felt like this could actually become a thing. I felt good until it was time to hop onto that call with them. Now before I continue with the story and get to the update of sorts, if you can call it an update, what is the Loop Filament Recycler? Well, this machine's supposedly a desktop consumer level machine that does it all. It blends, turning your old support material and failed prints into uniform chunks of plastic. From there, that thing's meant to melt it down into a consistent line of filament. And as it begins melting that down and extruding your reclaimed material, it begins the third phase of spooling. Typically this is the difficult part, or the most precise part of the process, because the spooling process actually pulls on the molten material. This is a crucial step because that tension needs to be administered very precisely. Increasing or decreasing that tension ultimately determines the final diameter of the filament. If that diameter is inconsistent or out of spec, 
Printing with it can result in clogs, extrusion issues, or generally bad looking prints. It's kind of like printing with that Creality Solian brand filament, as much as I hate to say. That's a, a filament company that Creality owns. Oh. So I don't yes. know if they were their own thing and Creality bought them or what the case is, but it's, yeah, it's their brand that they own. What the heck does Ultra uh, PLA stand for? So it's easy to see why having a machine that does all of that in one package that sits on your desktop is pretty cool. Well, it's a cool idea at least, but is it legit? Doesn't this seem like that too good to be true holy grail of 3D printing in some ways? Those are the alarm bells that would ring for normal people, but not for an obvious child like myself. I see the thing that looks too good to be true and I guess we just throw money at it. But let me get back to the story and explain how my optimism changed a little bit. So after my initial contact with the company, I patiently awaited my video call. I was looking forward to asking them questions and trying to see how this thing was built and how it worked. I was excited. Exciting. And then I received an email. There had been so much interest in this thing that they decided to do a huge corporate demo day for all the backers. This would allow them to showcase their prototype once to everybody all at the same time. They were hosting the event virtually and in person at their facility. That way, anybody that wanted to attend could ask all the questions and see the thing. It was a good solution, I felt like. I mean, it made sense to me. I've had to answer the same question over and over again in the comments section before. And as much as I enjoy your comments, just look at the other comments. The answer's are already there. Heck, sometimes the answer's in the video. But that's all to say I kind of get it. So I waited once again. This time we were waiting for a virtual invite to the event that was happening on November 23rd, 2024. Well, finally, on the 22nd of November, I received an email. Wouldn't you know it, the day before this live event was scheduled to happen, the plan changed once again. The day before. They decided that instead of hosting it live, they were going to do this weekend of content or something like that. Needless to say, this struck me a little bit. I'm struck. So that's when I finally began getting serious about the situation and trying to vet what I had spent my money on. Also, that's when I began documenting it because it seemed like something that the community was really interested in. So I threw together a video discussing everything that had happened up until that point. I wasn't really upset, like I had come to terms with the fact that I was likely losing my $100. And honestly, if you back something that's being kickstarted or crowdfunded, you should probably come to terms with the fact that you might lose your money. But I wanted this thing to be real. I mean, I really wanted it. So I hustled home early from work, recorded, edited, and released my first video the day that I got that email. At that point, I was really leaning toward this product being a scam. You all showed interest. Luckily, soon after that, the Loop team did release a video discussing their product and showcasing its function and answering a lot of questions. And that update actually gave me quite a bit of hope. I was able to put faces to names and I was able to see filament get recycled. So I watched their 45 minute video and I put together my own video recapping everything in that demo video. And since then, I've just been doing the normal stuff and kind of forgot that this was a thing. But a lot of you will periodically comment on my videos asking for an update. And if I'm being honest, I've received loads of updates. A lot of very in-depth specific updates about this machine. I'm very familiar with where they are in the prototyping, manufacturing, and testing phases of development. And it's so common to me that I kind of forgot not everybody has access to this information. So let's expand on that a tiny bit, shall we? Now as a backer, I have access to an exclusive Discord channel that gets us updates and pictures and all sorts of good stuff as the machine's being developed. Photos, design updates, product information, all the goods. I paid to hold my spot, therefore I have the inside scoop. The loop scoop, as it were. But there's also this bi-weekly or monthly newsletter that you can sign up for without committing any money. You just give them the email address and then they'll send you information. And that's available to anybody that wants it. If you put down money as a backer, I think you get a different email that's separate from the newsletter, but honestly, I'm having trouble differentiating all of it. But there's a lot of information coming your way if you're interested enough to find it. Now, while I was preparing for this video, I did reach out to the Loop team once again. I wanted to make sure I wasn't stepping on anybody's toes or oversharing in this video. So I wanted to verify what information I was allowed to tell you about and what information they didn't want me sharing. Please don't sue me, Loop. And unfortunately, they didn't give me, like, any leash on what I could share in this video. That's why it's intentionally vague, and that's why I put the disclaimer at the beginning that we're not really going to be covering anything new. Like, for example, I asked them if I could share any of the information from the members-only Discord, 
And they said no. Obviously, they said no. Obviously. That's like you pay money and then you get that perk. Uh, so, okay, I get that. That makes sense. But what about this monthly email newsletter that you don't have to commit any money to receive these emails? Surely I could share some of that information with you guys, right? Um, no, they don't want me talking about that either. So here I am with a community clamoring for an update and a crowded content schedule in need of a video that had room for a PCBWay ad. We've arrived at today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a service that fills the gap between consumer and professional manufacturer. Don't you hate it when you have an idea for something, but your desktop 3D printer doesn't have the power to center titanium powder together? Well, you know what? PCBWay can take care of that. With services like CNC machining, PCB manufacturing, sheet metal fabrication, and loads of different varieties of additive manufacturing, there's really no longer a gap between the average tinkerer in their basement and a full-blown manufacturing factory. So click that link below if you're interested in learning more about PCBWay. And again, thank you for supporting the brands that support videos like this. So with all this information at my fingertips and no blessing to share any of it, what do I do? I want to leave all of you guys with something of value because you've made it this far into the video. Especially those of you who actually sat through the PCB way ad instead of skipping ahead. You guys are the real ones. In order to stay safe and not spill too much, I'm going to be keeping it unfortunately vague. What I can tell you is this. If the loop filament cycler was going through a lot of testing or validation right now, that's something that would be mentioned in the monthly newsletter if that was happening. If the team was updating components and systems on the recycler to address concerns from the community and feedback from their testing, that's also something that would be mentioned in the monthly newsletter, if that was something that was happening right now. If there were specific timelines for specific development phases of the recycler, that would also be mentioned in that monthly newsletter. It's all readily available if you're willing to provide an email address and receive these updates. Now, does that mean you're gonna get all the updates that have come out for the past year? I don't think so. But I suppose you can hop in and see what's going on moving forward. Now, for the super secret backers only Discord server. Again, I'm not spilling anything super juicy, but if you're wanting pictures of prototypes, revisions, or different iterations of the machine, that could probably be found on this Discord server. If there were specific updates to internal or external components complete with pictures, that kind of thing would also be found on that Discord server, if those were a thing. If you were interested in anything related to the manufacturing process or the release timeline, that would also be found on this Discord server. And of course, if there were any product changes, major updates or upgrades happening, that would also be found on the Discord server if those things were happening. Anything inside Scoop's gonna be going on there and you have to pay for it to get access to that information. But unlike that email newsletter update thing, I think joining that Discord server will get you access to all the previous updates as well. So that's something. So of course I wish I could have been a little bit more forthcoming with information on this video, but I also wanted to address this again without making some clickbaity waste of time video as well. Hopefully I managed that. Let me know in the comments if you feel like I did. So if you want more information about the loop filament recycler, you can go ahead and sign up for that email newsletter. Otherwise, do let me know what you think in the comments. Is this just some super elaborate scam or are we finally gonna have access to a desktop filament recycler that's moderately affordable, kinda. Also, do you think it's even gonna work well enough for the average consumer to successfully reclaim their prints into filament? And speaking of that price tag, is it gonna be worth it in the end? Let me know what you think, and don't forget to enter our giveaway for your chance to win a free printer or some filament. And buy some merch at keoprints.com if you like. Bye.